Hey team, we're back with another full body workout. This one's 28 minutes long. We're gonna be doing one minute of work per exercise and you get a 10 second break just for transition times. All you need is one dumbbell. We're gonna be doing things with tempo. That means moving fairly slow on the way down. Um, so your time under tension is gonna be fairly long. Let's get going because we have our full body to work out. Team, first up, it's sumo deadlifts. I'm gonna hold the dumbbell between my legs. I'm gonna wait for the timer. There we go. Feet are basically just a little bit wider than shoulders. I'm gonna squeeze my back, push my butt behind me, push my knees out to the side, squeeze my butt to stand. So I'm moving two seconds on the way down. One, two, and then squeezing all the way up. We do have a full minute of work. So we're gonna be moving slowly but with intention. So as you move your butt back, you should be feeling it in your glutes, getting that stretch in your butt, and then using that tension to squeeze up. We're almost done this minute. And the nice thing about tempo work and just moving within a time domain like a minute is you can take breaks if you need to. Okay, you can slow it down if you need to. Wherever you're at, doesn't really matter. And done, okay. In this next one, it's reverse Nordics. So these ones are fairly challenging. I'm gonna put my hands across my chest or just hold them here. But you're gonna tighten your quads, lean back as far as you can. Okay, keeping your hips in the same line, core tight, and then coming all the way up. And you should feel this in your quads. So if you can only go down to here, that's fine. But you're trying to lift yourself, push yourself forward with your quads, okay? And then as we warm up, we're gonna work to get a little bit lower. These get hard. What I don't wanna see is going down and then dropping your hips to stand back up. I mean, if that happens once in a while, that's fine, but the main part is slow on the way down and then we're really trying to get our quads to push us all the way back to the top. Again, if you want to put your toes down, that's fine as well. It's a little bit bigger stretch on your quads. So I like toes down. Oh, and rest. Okay, 10 seconds. We are dropping down into glute bridges. So I'm gonna do this first set with just my body weight. Feet on the floor, core tight. We're gonna lift, back down. And these ones nice and slow as well. One second hold at the top and then lower. And again, this is just the first round out of four. On the other rounds, I'm gonna put the dumbbell on my hip, but for these ones, body weight, let's just warm up our glutes a little bit. Really squeeze the top. What we're trying not to do is get to a certain point using our glutes and then keep going with our lower back. So you wanna tighten your core and make sure you're only going up as high as you can using your glutes without your back. So even if that's just a little bit low, that's fine. Because over time you'll build enough strength to get a little bit higher up. Again, only using your glute muscles. And one minute of these is pretty nice. Team, we're transitioning over. Now we're into pike push-ups. 10 seconds here to get myself ready. I'm gonna move the mat. Hips in the air, doesn't really matter where your feet are. I'm gonna get them out of the way of my mat. Elbows pull forward, my head touches the ground, and I push back up. And again, these are fairly challenging. You're trying to keep your elbows pulled forward as you go down and up. So if you need to, you can drop down and just do a regular push up. If you can, nice and slow, two seconds down and then pushing back up. And we're trying to hold the tempo all the way down.
And we're almost there. Five more seconds. And rest. Okay, that was probably the toughest one for upper body, but we're gonna stay kind of in the same position. I can widen my feet if I need to. Here we go. You're gonna walk out into an inch worm. Okay, hit your plank. Do one, two shoulder taps, and then walk yourself back. Okay, if you need a break, you can stand all the way up. But if not, just touch your toes. One, two plank shoulder taps, toe taps, and we keep moving. And in plank, I'm trying really hard not to let my hips shift. To make it harder, I can walk my feet in. That's also a little bit harder. When you get to those plank shoulder taps, it's a bigger stretch for your hamstrings at the bottom as well. Now we're moving to some back work. This one's fairly challenging. We're gonna do a bent over row. So I'm gonna step back, put my elbow on my knee, just because this is a long time to stay bent over, but I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blade, row back, slowly lower. And this one might be hard for me to hold for the full minute, but we're gonna try. Trying to use just my shoulder blade to pull my elbow back. Try not to let our shoulder dump too much at the bottom. So I'm setting it, squeezing my shoulder blade into the middle of my back, rowing up. We have 20 more seconds. We'll see if I can do this. This might be tough for four rounds. And especially with back work, if you start using momentum and swinging, just take a second drop down, give your shoulder a break, your back a break, and then go again. Rest. We're switching sides. This is the only exercise we go back to back because it's single arm. Get ready. We'll keep moving. And in this position, I'm trying to keep my back as flat as I can. With my elbow on my knee, it's a little bit hard. Some of you might be here, but try and get a little more horizontal. Just because if you come up too much, it turns into a shrug, which we don't want. We want it to hit our mid back. In between our shoulder blades, a little bit in our lat. I'm really trying to focus on my mid back. solid strength workout. If you're gonna pick one workout that hits your whole body, this is it. And, oh my gosh, break, okay. One round then, we're doing the whole thing again. So we're gonna go back to our sumo deadlifts. I turn my toes out just a little bit, chest up, back tight. Two seconds down. For a sumo deadlift, I'm pushing my hips back, and as I push my hips back, I can let my knees softly bend, and I push them out to the side over my toes. Really start feeling this, or try and get this, try and feel this in your glutes. You can adjust your position a little bit. If you need to go wider, if you need to go narrower. Everyone's anatomy is a little bit different. There's no one size fits all, but there are certain guidelines we can follow, most of us. We're almost there. And rest, okay. 10 seconds, we're gonna go back to our reverse Nordics. Okay, 
brace your core. Let's hit those quads. As I'm warming up, I'm gonna get a little lower. Some people can go all the way down, it's crazy. These are tough. I'm trying to squeeze my butt so hard at the bottom here so my hips don't push back. Whew. And then use my quads to come up. So basically I'm trying to keep my body in a straight line. And these are very challenging. So if you want to pick a number and do like one every 20 seconds, that's totally fine as well. You can see by my face I'm trying really hard. Two seconds, and I'm gonna call it for that one for me. Really nice job. We're gonna go back to our glute bridges. This time I'm gonna take my dumbbell and put it on my hips. So core tight, same thing we did. Squeezing your glutes back down. And a really good way to think about doing this is at the bottom, I just slightly tuck my tailbone underneath me so I'm trying to close the distance between my ribs and my pelvis, so my core is set. And then I leave where I keep squeezing and I keep that position in place as I lift my hips up. Every time on the bottom, my lower back's touching the floor. If you're a little bit too arched, just re-tuck every single rep. Just a small tuck of your tailbone. Excellent work. Hey team, I really like that with weight. Okay, pike push-ups. We have two seconds, let's get into place. Hips up in the air, elbows forward. And again, modifications, regular push-up. This is also fairly hard. Or a push-up from your knees. Okay, or you're just going down as low as you can, even if that's halfway and pushing up. But over time, we want to get our head to the bottom, okay, by pulling our elbows towards our toes and then using our shoulders and our arms and our back to push us up. Nice and controlled lower. the second time around. Oh, let's finish that wrap. Perfect, okay. Shake out our arms for 10 seconds. We're gonna go into our inchworms with our shoulder taps. So let's walk out, hit our plank, get solid, and then do our two shoulder taps, trying really hard not to rock, okay? So you're fighting that rotation. One full minute. And if you're doing this properly, okay, especially with the plank by a minute, you should definitely be feeling your core. The shoulder taps get a little challenging. You just hit a plank, count one, two, and then walk your hands back up. And again, feel free to stand. Take a second if you need it. Totally fine. Go back down. Then, okay, let's do our bent over rows. You get set. 10 seconds basically gives you enough time to get into position. So anytime you need an extra break, go ahead and take it. I never know what to do with it and it gets in my way, but we're just using it as a support for our lower back.
then we're going nice and slow on the way down. So especially if you have lighter weight, we don't wanna to move too fast. Okay, setting our shoulder blade, rowing up, keeping that shoulder blade position as I pull the weight down. Fighting not to twist with my body. That part's the hardest. If you find you're pulling the dumbbell and twisting, take a break, reset. I was getting to that point. Perfect, 10 seconds. Let's switch sides. Second arm coming up. Let's keep going. And shoulder blade set. I'm trying to pull my elbow back to my hip. Lower that weight, keeping my back squeezed. I'm trying to pull my shoulder blades into the middle of my back. If you're not used to that position, it's a hard position at first. But what you can do without weight, take your shoulder blade, try and squeeze it in almost like you're squeezing a pencil in the middle of your back. The other shoulder blade, just helping you support. Back to the top, people. We're on round three, sumo deadlift. These are one of my favorite movements for glutes. Okay, because as you're hinging back, knees out. You should really be feeling that stretch in your butt. And then squeezing to get to the top. Really nice job, everyone. Basically, haven't stopped moving. It's 15 minutes in. You're over halfway. Ten seconds left. And rest. Okay. Reverse Nordics. Let's do it. I'm gonna take a little bit longer at the top of every rep, just to reset for a second, because these are hard. Okay, especially if you're going fairly low. Also not one of those people that can have like this passive face while I work out. It's just not happening. You guys are gonna get used to my faces. That's fine. Trying to hold my hips nice and straight. So on the way down, especially to protect your lower back, I am squeezing my butt as hard as I can so I can lift up with my quads. Instead of here, if I let go of my butt, I end up sinking, okay, which we're fighting not to do. Core tight. Rest. Let's go into our glute bridges. So sumo deadlifts was glutes. We just did quads. We're back to glutes. Really hold. Squeeze at the top. And again, you don't have to do these with weight. If you're working on doing them with just body weight. That's also an option. but some people feel them a little bit more if you add some weight on, especially as you start to get stronger. And 
15 seconds. Okay, my glutes are on fire. Need time to hit shoulders. Back to our pike push-ups. The clock already went, so we'll get right into it. Even another thing we're looking for is that you're not dropping straight down, okay? We're not letting our elbows flare out to the side. We're trying to track our elbows back towards our feet, kind of make a 90 degree angle at our elbow point at the bottom of this movement, right here, and then push. Nice and slow, get as low as you can, push back up with control. And again, anytime you need to, you can take breaks. This is also a long time to be upside down. Rest. Okay, let's keep going. We're almost done this round. We have one more round to go after this. Let's do our inchworms. For our plank shoulder taps. Not too fast. I'm getting a little fatigued. I'm gonna stand up at the top this round. Couple more reps in. Again, really fighting to hold my core as tight as I can at that bottom position. If you're not that flexible, that's fine. I'm not that flexible either. Okay, three seconds into our bent over row. And if you have different weights, if you have a heavier weight for the sumo deadlift and you wanna go a little bit lighter for the bent over row to keep a good shoulder position, that's also an option. You don't have to do the same weight if you have those options. I just picked like a medium weight, so it's getting a little heavy for the bent over row, but we're gonna try and hold it. if you need to and then let's keep going the one thing I will say about these rows is if you start sweating and your elbows on your knee it gets a little slippery three seconds one more oh. if you also have a bench or anything you can put your hand on the bench okay and do them this way as well but I realize not everyone has that. So we're gonna do it this way, which is a great way of doing them if you don't have a bench to put your arm on. Again, I'm setting my shoulder into the middle of my back and then trying to hold it in place even as my arm lowers. And we're fighting nice and hard, not use momentum with our upper body. It should be shoulder blade only. And as you can see, people might be walking back and forth, but that's because you're in my gym and people are working out. Which is what it's there for. Go this side and starting to use momentum. Try hard not to. Oh. Oh, rest. Team, we've almost done it. 
we're heading into our very, very last round, fourth round coming up. Sumo deadlifts. And depending on kind of where you are in your workout journey, if you're an experienced lifter, your muscle fibers turn on a little bit faster. If you're brand new to working out, you might find every set you do, you feel a little stronger. That's because as you do additional sets with rest in between, more and more muscle fibers turn on as your body gets used to using them. So it's pretty cool. And again, if you've been lifting for a while, lifting weights for a while, your muscles just already kind of know what they're doing and they turn on those big muscle fibers a little bit faster with less warm-up sets. And rest. Okay. Let's do our last set of Nordics. Okay. Oops. Nice and straight. Feel free to take breaks at the top. These are tough and you wanna do them with quality. Again, if you're only going here, that's still pretty hard, okay? If you can get all the way down. Oh, some people can touch their hamstrings to their feet. Oh, I almost did it. I gotta use my hands for counterweight. Tough. Okay, one more. Woo. Okay, five seconds left. I think that was my last one. Okay. Pike push ups. Get ready. Okay, hips in the air. Team, this is the kind of starting point for handstand push-ups against the wall. Just because when you're doing pipe push-ups with your hips in the air, um, your weight's distributed a little bit more in front of you. It's a little bit easier to start to train that position where your elbows are pulling in, okay? And you're pressing up. So my whole spine moves in one line. It's just my elbows bending and a press. Instead of bending at your spine, with your elbows flaring to get lower. Okay, so start practicing this position here. If you're gonna do handstand push-ups against the wall, which are really fun, you wanna get this solid base down before you add more weight onto your shoulders by getting more vertical. Rest. Whew. Okay. So you must do it. Inchworms into our plank shoulder taps. Try not to stand up. This is our last set. I am not the most flexible person. So some people can probably get their hips a little higher and their back flatter. But on these, it's okay to let your back round just a little bit as you touch your toes, just because we're not loaded. And you end up kind of having to move that way in life as well. I mean, if you're rounding and it hurts your lower back, that's a different story, okay? So then maybe you're not doing the inchworm, that's fine, so we always want pain-free range of movement. Rest. Okay. Last two sets to go. Let's get ready. Bent over rows. This is my last set. My back is 
little bit fatigued, so I'm gonna do somewhere between five to eight reps, take a little bit of a break, and then go back down and do it again. You have a minute of work, but don't be afraid to rest, just so we get that quality. I mean, your last couple reps aren't gonna look as perfect as your first reps, but we wanna hang on as long as we can. Reset when we need to. I am down to three reps. 10 seconds, let's try and get a couple more reps. One more. Oh my gosh. Look at the other arm coming up. See if I can do the same thing. Last set here. And get here. Try and get a set of eight. Quick rest. Oh my gosh, I'm at threes on this side now. Let's keep going team, 20 seconds. Let's get a couple more in. You're almost there. Okay, two seconds. And time. Okay, excellent work you guys. Thank you for doing that with me. We did that in one take. All these videos are one take. Done, so you're seeing me do it in, in real time. Thank you so much for doing that with me. I'll keep adding videos every week. So hopefully you follow along and take these traveling with you or work out at home. Have a great day.